This weekend I play my last ever college match on our home courts at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California. Definitely a very special and important day to spend the best way possible with the team. But also it was a very crucial match for me personally, as I was fighting for an individual achievement. You see, this year so far, out of all the home matches I played, I'm 9-0. So if I would win this match, I would go 10-0 and remain undefeated on home soil for the entire season. And I would be playing this last key match, drumroll please, with the slice only obviously. To add to this, it was also senior day, which means the team senior, including myself, would receive a thank you ceremony with speeches, a frame, and so on. As you know, if you watched the last video, today was a double header, where we faced the University of San Francisco and now Portland. To see how we did against San Francisco and to see some below average tennis level, make sure you check that video out. So at 12.30 p.m., it was the turn of Portland in yet another WCC battle. Let's see how it went. But first, there's some exciting stuff I wanna to talk to you about. Today, I wanna to talk to you about Coach Life. Coach Life is an online video training platform from all the junior coaches of Nick Kyrgios, Taylor Fritz, Iga Siontek, Francis Tiafo, Tommy Paul, Andy Roddick, you name them, they're on there. Easy to train the pros when they're already like top 50 or top 100, you know, just to perfect their game, uh, to get them to the most level. But who are the most important people who molded these players and build the foundation for them and develop them, I would say they're the junior coaches. Nothing like Coach Life has ever existed. There's currently 412 videos divided in 25 categories and from 22 coaches, with a new coach being added every month. We know that technique is not universal and needs to be molded and perfected for each player. That's why Coach Life is so clutch in these cases, because it comes with so many different lessons and approaches from a lot of different pro players and different situations. For example, if we go and sort by shot and choose foreign, we can literally learn about dozens of foreign from the best tennis players in the world, such as Steve Johnson, Nick Kyrgios, Taylor Fritz, Iga Swiatek, and many more. So you can say, oh, I play a foreign similar to Fritz or similar to Steve Johnson and learn how to master it just like they did. But it doesn't end there because Coach Life also tells you how to adjust and improve your shots in specific situations of the match, which honestly apply to everybody. As you can see here, for example, we have the deep defensive back end, open stance back end, high ball and low ball, and so on. Coach Light doesn't stop there though, because it also features full specific tennis fitness programs, strength and conditioning courses, tennis psychologists, nutritionists, and the world's leading tennis specific footwork specialist. So really something to improve all aspects of your game. Let me stress that Coach Life has lessons for every level of players. And there's actually a seven day free trial going on right now that you can access by clicking the first link in the description. And you should take advantage of that and test it out. We were on court one in doubles for the first time this year. So definitely a nice upgrade from a last ever home match. Doubles would be no exception to my self-imposed policy of slice only, which is not just a handicap I'm giving myself, but it's due to my wrist issues in case you're new to the channel. Anyway, I throw up a good lob here and then decide I want to rip the foreign inside in. So a pretty good start, I'd say. We're lot 30 up looking for that opening break that is always huge as college doubles is one set. They missed a foreign here. We lose the first chance, but it's still a triple break point. A good return and defeat here, and then I stupidly miss this easy volley. In no time it's deuce, so break point for us and game point for them. A bit of a wasted game, I'm not gonna lie, but we have to focus on our own serve now. We're 40-30 and need to try and close this game here. A good serve T and we just need to close the smash. And another one. Is third time's a charm? Nope. Fourth one finally does it. The next game we're once again low 30 and we follow a good lob return by sprinting to the net. But another missed volley. We have two break points and my returns stay a bit too middle. But I can still get to his volley and throw up a lob. But this match was just too fast though. Deuce point. Go return cross, and that foreign's out. Not easy the first time at one this year, but we're playing well. A good serve here puts us 3-1. This point here is my best contribution to the match. Kick wide and a surprise slice line return winner. And it was actually in an important moment too, because it puts us 30 all. Return winner by Eddie. We get to deuce point once again, and it's a good body first serve. I play this over the head foreign, which somehow does the job and gives us that double break. It's pretty much smooth sailing now. Good serve, volley to close. At 40 love, another good serve and then missed return puts us one game away from the map. 15-30 and off of his kick I go for a one-handed return here, right at him. But predictably I overdo the 4 in the next ball and miss it. 30 all. First match point then, the usual kick wide and I throw up a lob, I don't know if it was a 4 or a back end honestly. But it goes in, that's what matters. The rally goes on until he misses the foreign, giving us the match and also the doubles point as a team. In singles on court 2 I was facing Nicolas Okana, Canadian player who's a 12.43 UTR. Consider that this was the same day as my previous video, the match where I played awful tennis. 
And this is just a couple of hours later, but you can already see my footwork and energy is already different. I was more actively looking for foreigns and just in general making less enforced errors, which were very frequent in the last match. I play a good point here that ends with this foreign winner. I get a 40-30 this game, still trying to test my opponent here and moving him around, trying to figure out how to break him down. He seemed pretty solid so far and didn't make mistakes, but also wasn't particularly aggressive. This foreign winner wins me the first game. First return game here, and the goal for me at the beginning is always to try and get comfortable with the slice return, although here it's short, and then I try this one-handed pass. At 15 all we play one of many long rallies of the match, that are pretty typical. You'll see how he's a very energetic player, but doesn't play with too much pace, and how I alternate between speeding up with the foreign and slowing down the point with the slice. Let's move volley here to win it. At 15.30 he goes pretty heavy kick, unsurprisingly he liked a lot playing there so I have to slice their turn, but afterwards as he's coming up I rip a one handed pass and he misses the volley. First break point then. Yeah, he took that one, and I get another try the next point, but I missed the return. Use point. After watching quite a few of my matches, I've seen that my playing style has become quite unique, but also effective, I would say. I always give my opponent different spins and pace. I can play a lot with the slice and try to get them to lift one up, or speed things up with the foreign and pushing them outside. I think that honestly, even when my wrist will recover, I will still be using the slice quite a lot, because I've seen it work a bunch so far. Anyway, after a second overhead, he finally misses. Ace down the T. He returned pretty close to the net on second serve to try and put pressure on me, but the net strap slows this one down, so I'm able to get a foreign. Here I'm just trying to stay as deep as possible, both with the foreign and the slice. He gets this heavy back and cross though, and I have to slice this one, which is very risky, but it causes him to miss. 30-15 down and a good first serve to the back end, which I'm barely able to make, but then I said, you know what, I'm feeling it. Boom, cross-court pass. In case this is the first video you're watching, I have a two-hander. 30-all, he starts off pretty aggressive here, but this is an example of how slowing the point down is really effective, even in high-level tennis. He's camping on the back end corner, so I go slice line, and then that causes him to miss. First break point this game, and a good first serve, but I'm ready for it, and this is a free error, but I'll take it. This just shows, as I always say, that these matches change based on a few points. You know, he didn't play well that one break point, and suddenly I'm almost up for one. I'm 40-15 here, and we get into this heavy rally that I'm not really a fan of, so I try to lower the height with the slice. Eventually, I decide to rip this foreign line. 4-1 and another serve on the line, and I might be getting into a habit here, but once again a one-handed pass and a volley miss. I might have been getting in his head a little bit with those. 15-30, and at this point I play one of my favorite combos. 4 in from the middle to push him out, and then going hard flat line, which pays off as a point. 3 opportunities to go out 5-1, they usually slice return, and I thought he was gonna approach after this, so I go for the one-hander once again. At 30-40 he aces me. Classic kick wide. And this time the slice return stays in, although not without risk. He's first to move me here, and my reaching save is not good at all. I guess the right side, but this pass looks more like a baseball shot than a tennis one. If I was going to keep on my level though, this lost game wasn't going to be an issue really. I'm starting a bit behind this point, but I've noticed he didn't mind hitting backers from the middle when he sliced. I wasn't aggressive with them, so I knew that when I was in trouble, this was like a reset. Eventually he misses. 40 love. He returns deep, but nonetheless, I don't slow down my swing and keep him there in the back and corner. Whenever I'm one game away from the set and I'm returning, I always try my hardest to break there so I can start serving in the new set. I get a 4 into approach on here, but it's not really angled enough so he's able to pass me. I do win the next two points though, so I'm up 15-30. He rips an inside-in winner though. Great point here gets me to set point. My legs are a bit missing here and it sails long. 
an inside out miss and that's the first set 6-2 started off the second set with an ace and it's been a few of those already today and another one not an ace this time but a good first serve and an easy hold he started off on his serve more aggressive and i could tell that it was already a difference from the first set despite me trying to slow things down here he was going for bigger shots like he does making me run and defend now brace yourself for the hot shot of the day just watch and be satisfied I know what you're thinking, that's a classic locked 40 down return, but who says I can't go ahead and win this game now? Look at that, foreign cross to push him out, he defends well, but you know what, I don't care. Down the line winner. 30-40 and I want to hit another big winner, let's see if I manage to do so. He definitely shifted momentum pretty neatly, I'll tell you that. He's more aggressive and hits another winner here. 15-0, and this time I had enough. And I was gonna try to be the most aggressive and be ahead in the point. I play a miraculous volley on the line here, but he gets there and puts a high lob. I play a very underwhelming smash, as usual. And then I hit two foreigns as hard as I can. Look. Approach to the other side and a very, very risky overhead on the line. From my body language it seems like I'm playing more loose, but also with less patience, which so far is working in my favor, but could be a problem if we start missing. We get to 40-30 eventually, and he returns nice and deep, before he gets the second foreign where he plays heavy cross to push me outside. And yeah, the rest from now on is just terrible. So suddenly I'm facing a break point. Sneaky down the line, which I don't expect and I barely make that. And then I really thought this pass was gonna go in, but it stops on the net. Tennis is weird sometimes, you're in total control and then you're down a break a second later. I'm making moves already this next game to get the break back though. I'm two points away and need to up my level, just like this. Two wasted chances to get the break back and it's now or never. Just like in the fourth set and unforced error and I'm back in it. It's interesting actually, just like in the first set, he served very well and then missed the foreign next. I don't know if he was nervous, but definitely a tough hit to swap. Another ace here at 15 love, 30 love, and now he makes me play a tough point. Serve well at 30-15, but his return is very uncomfortable for someone who can only slice the back. He's probably the longest point of the match, I'll let you watch and enjoy. Big serve wide here, and I have my mind made up to go inside in to follow that, and that gives me a vital hold. Now it's time to keep pressing and making crack, and try to get free points just like this. Another free error here. We get to deuce though, and man, this is gonna play out the same as the other breaks. We need to consolidate the break, not through points like these. He had moments where he would miss more, but I couldn't let my guard down because from one point to another he could come up with a pretty good shot honestly. I turn around to hurt him with the foreign, going inside out on the first one, and then inside in. But he comes up with this heavy cross ball that leaves me standing there. Every game was always a battle regardless of the score. I try to keep him in the foreign corner, and secondly I hit with much power high to low to the other side. That gives me a game point that would guarantee that I would at least be able to serve for a set. I'm on the back end corner though, as this rally is getting started. 
and I'm only getting foins occasionally. Sometimes that's also my fault as I get comfortable just slicing. But I do start moving around with a foin here a couple of times and he misses long. I'm up 15-30 trying to put an end to this match here and the foin was my weapon of choice. Inside out that doesn't really push him out and he flashed him with a down the line back end. 30 0 Yeah, just good point by him there. His game point and after the serve he goes for the back end line straight away but misses this time. Here's the match point. There we have it, that is dubs only this year on the home courts. A pretty solid match overall, played well the important points as well as some mistakes by him there. But this is just what tennis is a lot of the time, it's just winning those deuce points and snatching those tough games, especially in college where those deuce points carry a lot of weight. We once again took the team W 4-2 this time, closing our home matches for this year with a victory. After the match ended we had a nice celebration for senior day, where they gave myself and the other seniors a picture frame signed by all the team and a nice presentation where they talked about our achievements while at Pepper. Overall, a really nice way to end my time here. Stay tuned because next week we're playing our last conference match of the year and we're playing to clinch a regular season title. So it's gonna be a heated match.